Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. I'm Doc Hamels, and welcome to an, another edition of Chautauqua Sunrise. Hope you're all doing well and getting ready for a busy uh, eclipse coming up. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Good afternoon to wherever you are in the world, uh, throughout Europe. Uh, good morning to our friends over in the Ukraine. We're thinking of you as always. Uh, good afternoon to my listeners on WRFA 107.9, low power to the people. At Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Thanks for uh, uh, listening in. We've got a very interesting show that we're going to be talking about here shortly. Um, and we thank WRFA for uh, carrying us all these years. And uh, we have a great working relationship with them. I want to say good morning to all of you that are watching this live this morning. Uh, happy April. Hmm. <laughs> April is always supposed to feel like, you know, flowers popping up and everything. I don't know about your house, but we've been getting snow and rain. And I had to put little pontoons on Brody's feet so he can stay up, uh, on top of the water at our house. My gosh, I, I go walking with him every morning and I about slid down the hill today. But I guess it's supposed to dry off. All right. Um, you know, we always tell you that throughout the show, you can give us a call and uh, share any information that you want. And... Uh, so if you do, it's called 716-753-5225. If you have an announcement for your club or organization, if you have an announcement of any sort that, that seems suitable for our show, we will ha be happy to get on there. Uh, also, if you have a birthday, watch, I'll demonstrate. I want to say happy birthday to Chris Bird, our director, who just had a birthday. Justin, how old is he? 33. 33, a big 3-3. Three, three. So... Uh, Chris, I hope you had a good birthday, and to my sister-in-law, Peg Hamels, uh, we won't mention uh, ages, we're not allowed to because then I get hurt, but uh, Peg, happy birthday, and I know that you watch the show from time to time. So uh, if any of you have a birthday or somebody you want to wish anniversaries or anything like that, give us a call. Okay, lots of things to talk about real quick here. Um, let's see, what should I go to next? All right. So, eclipse. Lots of people are talking about the eclipse, and we've been talking about it here. And uh, they're 
they're having fun with it. That's the only way I can look at this is that, uh, you know, we've been kind of in the dumps since p the pandemic period. And finally, it seems like we're breaking through and people are getting together for some fun things. So I'm trying to look at this in a fun way. The only thing is, this is sort of like spring break in the north where everybody's gathering and therefore we got to think about some things. I heard some figure and I don't, I, I heard this figure. Okay, so I, I don't know if it's true or not, but so I will say in the region, I don't think it's Chautauqua County alone, but in the region, a million people are supposedly coming to this region because we are right in the path of the total eclipse of the sun. And uh, if you look on any maps, it does go right straight through our county and up into Buffalo and then I don't know where it goes from there. But around 3, whatever, 20, 3, 18, something like that, Monday morning or afternoon, um, it's going to have a, a period of darkness with, with the, the moon getting right in front of the sun. And, you know, without saying, get your glasses, they're everywhere, all right? Um, I know there's some talk about out there that says, oh, don't worry about it, you know, you don't need those glasses. Well, okay. When you end up in the emergency room and you've got uh, sun glare burn on your retinas and permanent damage, fine. But uh, most of us that are sane and, and, uh, and I'm not trying to be insulting or anything like that, but, let, you know, use the glasses. They're free. You can get them at just about any town hall. Which brings to the point I want to make next is that services and different things are going to be a little different on Monday. So if you're here visiting our county, welcome. If you're here visiting our county, Monday, a lot of places are going to be open like half day. For instance, the credit unions and the banks and I think other places are going to be closed. Um, I would recommend if you're going to go shopping for Monday, you're getting, having eclipse parties, whatever, shop on Sunday. I would suggest don't go out uh, for that kind of thing unless you're going to, you know, go to a party or you're going to go to one of the local venues to celebrate, you know, get there early. But be aware that there's probably going to be a little bit of uh, traffic congestion. Also be aware that our fire departments are on high alert because we're going to have so many people in the area and, you know, there's always the possibility that someone might get sick. So we want to make sure the roads are open for our uh, first responders. And also keep in mind that, um, because of the roads, they might have some non-parking areas. And I was just hearing from somebody here at the studio that uh, I think they're up in Dunkirk, was it, I heard? I think they're, they're closing some of the streets so that the main thoroughfares are open because, again, we want to have all the, the main roads open in case people need to get through in quick. When you have that many people in an area like ours, we don't have a lot of parking. So park smart, uh, visit carpool, whatever, and of course, just enjoy the day. Kick up your heels, have some fun with this, uh, and, uh, well, be safe, all right? So be, be uh, alert on that. And if you're visiting our county, of course, uh, as I already said, welcome, enjoy all the great things that, are, that we got here in the county, and I know a lot of the venues are having music and food and parties and things like that. So, uh, first time it's happened in a long time. I think the last time was in 1970. I don't recall that. I, I don't remember where I was, but I remember something about it. It got kind of dark, but uh, I think this is going to be pretty spectacular, they're saying. And the, the news report I heard today that uh, even though there might be some clouds, there's still going to be a significant eclipse to look at. So uh, still wear the glasses. The clouds don't protect your eyes from all that stuff. Be smart. All right. Uh, what else? Um, some of you uh, have been able to follow uh, another program that I'm involved with that we have here on Access Chautauqua from time to time called Oak Island Plus uh, with Jim McQuiston and myself and we have finished a whole year of programming our video podcast and uh, we just uh, finished producing episode 12 in two parts so it's part one is an hour part two is an hour so if you're interested uh, you can go to YouTube and look at it or uh, we're going to be showing that here in the next couple of weeks, uh, part one and part two. And uh, so if you're following that, that's going to be showing up here pretty soon. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so I'm going to do a little kind of a strange introduction right now to what we're going to be talking about today. Then we're going to have a little uh, public service announcement, and then we'll get right to my guest. So, Justin, you're going to like this. I know your ears are going to perk up. Imagine you know somebody that's a young child and they're kept in isolation, okay? They are psychologically abused. 
They're called names. They're not even called by their first name. They're called by their last name all the time. Sometimes the other children will physically abuse them, push them, punch them, knock them down, whatever. Um, they, they get secondhand clothing, hand-me-downs. They're not even considered important enough to have new clothes. Imagine um, um, being minimalized. And what I mean is, is that you, you exist and that's it, you, you, it, within the situation where they're living. Think about actually being kind of pushed into servitude where you are, uh, this, this child serves the family or the parent and, 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 and they exist just to, to, for the pleasure of the rest of the people or the adults. Think about um, a situation where maybe even there's bars on the window. You know, for 20 years, we watched, for 20 years, 20 years ago it happened, a little boy named Harry Potter, and I was thinking about that today, he was abused. And we watched his life of abuse. And, uh, and it continued for many years. So we're going to be talking about Child Abuse Awareness Month, and my guests will be on shortly. But think about Harry Potter a little bit. We all were marveled at the at the movie and so forth, but we, but we, I don't think we ever really kicked in the fact that he was being abused, right? Yeah, pretty sad at times. And how many times did you want to punch Dursley in the mouth? <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we're going to have a public service announcement, and we'll be right back because we're going to be talking about Child Abuse Awareness Month. They said I have trolls. That, that my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. And bullying fits right in the storyline. So before uh, we get to my guest, I have some announcements to share with you. But I want you to think about the life of Harry Potter because I know almost everybody that's watching has probably either read the books or watched the movies. So before that, let's do these quick announcements and then we'll get right to my guest. All right. Dunkirk's events press conference was announcing the following. The mayor of the city of Dunkirk's festivals and special events department, they're excited to host uh, the fact that uh, at the um, Clarion Hotel, Steelbound Brewery, uh, they're going to have an Eclipse Fest, all right, right at the Clarion, okay? And uh, the community members are welcome to be there. There's going to be live music by the Porcelain Bus Drivers uh, directly after a press conference there at 7 p.m. There's going to be other activities including uh, ex exclusive waterfront viewing, Steelbound Eclipse beer for purchase and drink specials. The Jamestown Ice Chainsaw Carving uh, will do a demonstration. There's going to be kids' activities and prize drawings. The VIP Pavilion uh, tickets are no longer available, though, due to lack of interest. Uh, they were putting together a package, but, uh, but you still have an opportunity to have some fun. The Dunkirk Boardwalk, the City Pier, and surrounding businesses will also be open to visitors that day. Okay, this is the day of the eclipse. April 8, and if possible, spectators are encouraged to walk to the uh, waterfront instead of driving. We talked about that, trying to reduce the amount of uh, traffic. And if you're interested, uh, you can contact Ryan Hall, the Dunkirk Festival's coordinator, at 366-9886 and, uh, for more information or go to their uh, Dunkirk Government Facebook page. So a lot going on in Dunkirk. We've been hearing about this for quite some time, and they're going to have a lot of fun up there. So again, Please think ahead, think about uh, the traffic situations. Don't get caught up in the traffic because I'm sure there's going to be some after and before uh, and uh, be safe. All right, let's go to sl uh, slide 15. Okay, this is CHQ Aging, Leaders in Aging Well at Home. All right, Chautauqua County Aging Services, Spring Social Invitation, tickets are only $10. It's going to be held at two different locations, all right? Uh, May 1st, coming up uh, at the Doubletree uh, at 150 West 4th Street in Jamestown. Then, of course, on May 8th at the Clarion, same place, a month later after the eclipse over in Dunkirk. All right, they're asking you to register by April 12th, so that's by the end of this week coming up. You can give them a call 661 
1-800-242-8293. All right, and then uh, for accommodations and so forth, uh, from 11.30 to a.m. to 12, 2.30 p.m., there's registration, uh, 11.30 those days, uh, resource fair and activities during that these periods. There's going to be keynote speaker, lunch and activities. I had the opportunity last year to be a keynote speaker, uh, and it was lots of fun. And for ten dollars, you get a nice meal and so forth. And uh, it's being held by CHQ Aging. All right. Now let's go on to sixteen. Jeff scams, never ending fraud alert. Okay. You know, every day, I, I don't know about you all, but I get emails from crazy locations, and there was just a big um, security breach through, I think it was AT&T. All of a sudden, you get all these crazy emails from places you never heard of, people trying to get you to uh, spend money, or, or you've got uh, deliveries that you didn't order, and all kinds of stuff. So, Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office, in collaboration with the Chautauqua County Department of Mental Hygiene and Social Services, has been made aware of multiple reports concerning fraudulent activities perpetrated by unknown individuals within our community. So, I talk about the internet and virtual things. These are people that are coming to your door or on the phone. Reports indicate that individuals are falsely representing themselves as representatives of the Department of Social Services, going door to door under the pretext of distributing free tablets and cell phones. These imposters are soliciting sensitive personal information, including social security numbers, which is a huge no-no, Medicare cards, which has your private personal number, electric bills, from unsuspecting residents, it is crucial to emphasize that the Department of Social Services is not, I repeat, is not engaged in such activities and residents are advised to exercise caution. I'll give you another example of a scam that happens to me every once in a while. I get a phone call, hi grandpa, and I'm listening. The kid has an accent, none of my kids speak with an accent, and uh, they're trying to scam you, they want money, so there's another one. Additionally, other scams involve individuals claiming affiliation with the Chautauqua County Social Services, coercing residents to sign paperwork to designate social services as their representative payee for Social Security income. Why would you do that? Residents are misled into believing that failure to comply with, uh, will result in the cessation or the ending of their Social Security payments. This, <coughs> excuse me, this deceptive practice deviates from the standard procedures of the Chautauqua County government and is unequivocally, that's hard to say, uh, a scam, okay? It's not happening, it's, n it's not anything the government's doing, don't sign any paperwork because you are basically giving permission for them to take your money. While the majority of uh, these incidents have targeted elderly residents, it is imperative for all members of the community remain vigilant. Chautauqua County officials uh, assert that these activities are fraudulent in nature. We urge the public to promptly report any encounters with such individuals to their local law enforcement agencies. So for the most part, in the cities you call your, your police departments, for us that live in, in the rural area, call the sheriff's department and the subject, okay? Report them. If you don't report it, then they can't track these people and they're jumping from town to town. If you find yourself in a situation involving these suspicious individuals, please endeavor to gather a detailed description of the person or vehicle involved, get their license plate. It is safe to do so and promptly report it to the authorities. Chautauqua County is committed to the safety and well-being of its residents and we encourage everyone to remain cautious and report any suspicious activity promptly. Okay, so the Sheriff's Department number is, ready? Write this down if you want. 716-753. 4232 716 753 4232 all right then here's a here's a good here's a good announcement we don't re really uh, see this very often let's go to slide 17 what's this all about Cornell Cooperative Extension of Chautauqua County's Master Gardener Program, who were just here a couple weeks ago, would like to share the announcement of the Chautauqua County Beekeepers Association. We'll host their next monthly meeting Thursday, uh, April 11th at the Fluvanna Community Church on Fluvanna Avenue in Jamestown. April's topic will focus on how to install 
new honeybee packages and pros and cons and differences of purchasing certain packages versus nucleus colonies. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure there's a difference. Meetings are scheduled for the second Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. Uh, you do not need to be a beekeeper to join in all are welcome. Justin, this could be your new hobby, a beekeeper. Think about that. The city of Jamestown, all those little bees coming to the ear. No, okay. For more information, 716-664-9502 or contact Cornell University Cooperative Extension and they're in the phone book. Again, 716-664-9502. And we have beekeepers out in Ripley. They do a great job. All right, here's our last one, okay? This is a fundraiser for the at the Westfield Hospital and this is with the Westfield uh, Memorial Hospital Auxiliary. They do great work over in Westfield supporting the hospital. They are doing what they call shredded. Okay, that's where you bring all your uh, personal papers that you want to get rid of and you don't want to throw away in the garbage because you're worried about the, the uh, FBI or CIA going through your garbage or the, the, somebody that's a bad person. So you go down to the uh, parking lot at the Westfield Hospital on May 4th. $10 a container and they'll shred it and no one will ever be able to put all those papers back together again and read your personal information. And so that supports what they do. All right, we already did the public service announcement. I did things out of order just for a little difference and also because I got confused. <laughs> I want to invite back to the show Emily Spielman who is with the Child Advocacy Program here in Chautauqua County. I got that right, right? You sure did. So what do you think my Harry Potter uh, lead in? Yeah, yeah, no, that was very interesting, absolutely, and that was a situation of neglect, right? Yeah. And so, which is a form of child abuse, absolutely. So, so neglect and psychological uh, abuse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. You know, they didn't even call him Harry. They said Potter, you know, and, <laughs> and he lived under the stairs. Right? I don't yeah. know how long. He was like 11 years old or something like that. Right. I mean, how would you like to live under the stairs and, and Dudley jumping down the stairs on top of you and all that stuff? Yeah. I digress. So anyways... Justin and I are Harry Potter fans, as you can tell right there, my <laughs> Gryffindor badge. Okay, so, um, Helen, you've been here before. Mm -hmm. I know that you're, you're, you're closely involved with what's going on in, in Chautauqua County. All right, I'm going to ask you a funny question, and it's an obvious answer, but is child abuse a problem in Chautauqua County? Absolutely, yes, it is. Okay, is it something that's always been here? Absolutely, yes. Unfortunately, it has Probably been. since people had children, mm -hmm. right? I mean, back yeah. thousands of years. Yeah. And some people thought it was a form of discipline, and then, they, then as we have realized, it, there's a point that we get beyond that's not normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll, we're gonna delve into that today, right? Yes. Okay, and then, um, where do I wanna go with this? Child abuse, <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, I'm disciplining my kid, I'm this or that, and the other. So how about we start out, what do we mean by child abuse to begin with? What, what, is, what is it? Yeah, so there's many different forms of child abuse. And so, you know, there's physical abuse where that could involve um, physically harming or um, inflicting that um, physical injury to your child. Um, so in those situations, you might see those bruises, you might see um, um, just different like unexplained injuries um, that might be happening. And a lot of times with physical abuse, it's not in areas that you would typically see in children, right? When we're talking about small children, especially children who are like learning to walk, right? They're clumsy, right? You're gonna fall, you're gonna get bruises. Um, and so those are oftentimes typical. You see those, right? But if you start to see bruises in places that don't really make sense or- All right, let's um, talk about like, so what, what would not make sense to you? Yeah, so, um, you know, so if you think about a child, right, if they have bruises on their face because they're falling, right, so if it's like a forehead or if it's on their forearms or on their knees, <coughs> right, that's a pretty typical place that you would find it. But if you saw a bruise, let's say, like on their back, right, underneath their clothes, um, that's not really a typical place that you would find an injury on a child. Um, and so it's things like that. And there is, there's a great graphic, and unfortunately I did not bring it with me okay. today but it'll show you the typical spaces um, on a child based on their developmental age of where you will typically Ooh. find bruises or injuries um, on that child. You know, um, 
I don't know if I ever told you this, but I, I taught school for 15 years. Yes. And I worked with children with, with disabilities. And mm -hmm. I had a little boy, we'll go nameless, but uh, he was a runner and he was clumsy. And I think mm -hmm. he was only five years old. And he ran smack dab into my desk. Mm -hmm. And he had a goose egg like yeah. this. And I go, oh my God. And they <laughs> think I'm abusing him, you mm -hmm. know? But it's it's that type yeah. of thing. Your kids do these sorts of things, you know? Absolutely. When my grandkids are at my house, it's like I'm looking around the house. Where are they going to run into? Where are they going to mm -hmm. fall on? And so I'm, I'm quickly putting pillows in different places and I'm moving things that aren't you know, kid friendly and things like that. So, yeah. yeah. But then again, um, I think that parents also worry. Well, should I spank? Can I spank my child? Can mm -hmm. I? Can I? Can, can I pick them up and set them down because they're just being so so mm -hmm. out of control? I mean, where's the where's the line there? Yeah. So that's actually a very tricky question to yeah. answer because in New York State, you know, corporal punishment—that's what we call that spanking. Absolutely. And, um, corporal punishment it is legal, right? But and, and that's where it gets so tricky because where is the line? When does too far go too far? Um, so that's, there's really no like correct way to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, but if it is um, inflicting trauma on that child's mental health or if they're becoming scared of their parents or if, or whoever they're living with or, it just it starts to have those longer lasting effects that's where we really start to get concerned you know and i think maybe and, and i want to take one one type of abuse at a time here mm -hmm. as we go so i'm thinking you know especially little guys you know they're still wearing diapers you give them a swat the diaper basically mm -hmm. picks up most the of the of, of the spank but i think it's probably something that's repeating yeah and 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 that it's long term mm -hmm. um and, uh, and maybe even the state of the mind of the person that's delivering the corporal mm -hmm. punishment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so really, I think, you know, what sticks out to me the most about corporal punishment is what is the lesson that you're teaching your child, mm -hmm. right? Because if we are using like spanking or slapping or whatever it might be to discipline that child, what I worry about and what I get concerned about is are you teaching that child that hitting and spanking and that physical is teaching them that that's what people do when they love you right because you're doing it from a place of i love you i care about you i want you to learn the best but what message is that child actually receiving and mm -hmm. how are they going to interpret that when they become adults and they are forming their own relationships does that kind of make sense mm -hmm. you know um we advertise a lot for prevention works and mm -hmm. they do a lot of parenting programs yes. and sometimes you can have three or four kids, and two of them are just fine, and there's always the third one that mm -hmm. kind of gets on our last nerve sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think at the time when you're in the supermarket and the kid throws himself on the floor, mm -hmm. or they're screaming, I will get the, you're the meanest mom in the whole world, mm -hmm. or you're a terrible dad, or whatever. And, uh, and, and sometimes we're just at a loss yeah. in our tool, tool kit, you know? And yes. sometimes, you know, we, we do things as, oh, I can't believe I just gave him a little shake or mm -hmm. I spanked him in public or whatever. Well, sometimes that's appropriate, sometimes it's not, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so, I, like you said, I think it's, what are you trying to tell them? Mm -hmm. But also, I think the state of mind the person's in, you, we, as adults, we Absolutely. gotta rein in our, our emotions, too. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, it's hard. <laughs> Absolutely, when you're a parent, it's a full-time job. Even when, you know, you're at work, right? Yeah, you're yeah. still caring for that child um, throughout their, you know, whole lives, yeah. and so, it is hard. It is hard to keep our emotions in checks as adults to provide that guidance to our children. So, and with that being said, nobody's perfect, right? right. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things that we're not proud of sometimes, right? right? But it's also teaching that child, right? Mm -hmm. That people do make mistakes and you do mess up sometimes, but let's have a conversation. Let's talk let's about it. it and yeah, yeah. You, let's learn from that. And how can we move forward? You know, uh, being a teacher, administrator and so forth, I, I develop the voice. <laughs> and so my grandkids, my kids, everybody, it's like, uh-oh. Because I, I didn't have to do it. I, I think I, I probably spanked my kids maybe once or twice in their lives. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time it was the voice. Mm -hmm. the look. Then they used to say, to, the kids used to come visit our house, they go, my kids would say, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with him. Because yeah. when he talks like that, that's the voice. Uh -huh. Or the look. And, mm -hmm. you know, the... 
don't yeah, do that again. And absolutely. they would just, and I would just stare them down and they would go sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you found that alternative, right? It, you it found took a that long time, mm -hmm. you know? It does, yes. And so, and every kid's different, right? You Definitely. could use, like, sometimes you can use that voice or that look for one kid and it works all the time. And right. then you have that other kid <laughs> who's thinking, mm, well, I got it, but how can I get away with it, one right? Of my, one of my favorite so, little stories I used, I used to work with parents on, and this will make sense because parents that are watching right now are you're shaking your head. They'd say, how many times I got to tell you to sit down and be quiet? And then the little boy would say, 43 times. Uh -huh, Normally yep. it's 28. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can see the steam you coming out of your ears. Yeah. But, but there are tricks of the trade. And I always mm -hmm. encourage people that if you're having difficulty, do you know, yeah. contact agencies, talk to your te their teachers. Uh, there's some resources and maybe mm -hmm. you supplies with some here. Have other that. parent friends, yeah. right? Yeah. Vent yeah. about what it. Doing? What are you doing? What are we, <laughs> you know, absolutely. That support is so key, right? To protect <laughs> those, those um, um, protective factors, you yeah. know, to help us be the best that we can for our kids. I used to go right? to my dad years, years after I was a parent and I'd say, I'm sorry. And yeah. my dad would look at me and go, why? He said, yeah, I said, don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm know. sorry I did that. Uh -huh, that I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, those that are watching right now say, I, I, I don't have kids currently. There's the neighborhood kids, mm -hmm. and I see something going on, but I don't know if I should get involved. And mm -hmm. so what should they do? Yeah, and so that's a very tricky situation, right? Because sometimes you don't really know the full story of what's going on and mm -hmm. you question yourself, like, should I do something? Should I not? I'm not sure. It's very common, right? Um, but there is a hotline number that we have. Mm -hmm. um, it's on slide four, um, if you want to pull up that hotline number. Um, and this number is basically where you can go to report if you suspect any type of abuse. Okay. And when we talk about that, it's just a suspicion. And so that's that 1-800 number there, 1-800. Well, what you're waiting for is for the people on the listening yeah. on the radio. Yeah, so if you suspect child abuse or neglect, you can report it to the Child Abuse Reporting Hotline, and that number is 1-800-342. 3720. And so um, this is if you're suspecting abuse of any sort. Of course, if it's an immediate danger emergency, please call 911. Right. Um, I want to make that distinction now. Right. Um, but this hotline number is if you just have that gut feeling, if you have an inkling that something's going on, something's not right, you can call this number, give them a little bit of information about what is going on. Um, they may ask you questions that you're not sure of, and that's okay. You don't have to have all of the information. Um, just let them know what you know say I don't know when you don't know but then it's their job to determine if what um, the information you're re they're receiving if they need to make either law enforcement action or a child protective services um, action and so they will then send that information out to our local law enforcement or child protective services okay. based on the situation for them to respond and so that they can then in conduct um, a little bit of an investigation to see what's going on. Okay, and I think the the word that was on there was immediate danger. Mm -hmm. Yes. We used to call it imminent danger, like something's really going down and it's really serious. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, the guy, uh, the, there's a situation where maybe it's neglect, and I want to say this is less than, but you, you're, it's like neglect, or those mm -hmm. kids are unattended, or you just don't think they're, 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 they're well being is okay is there right, like a, yeah. kind of a general concern i mean this was like immediate it said yes. is there who should they call in that case so in these forms like the physical abuse the physical neglect um emotional abuse the sexual abuse you can um use that same hotline number because these are all forms of abuse all right so it doesn't have to be happening right this minute but just say i'm, right, I'm saying yeah. something that's been going on for some time now yeah absolutely call that number because then that could be you know the first step of you know people actually going the step further to investigate a little bit who are trained professionals to do yeah. so um, to provide that help and that support for the child. Can this be an anonymous thing? Absolutely. Okay, because mm -hmm. I know people say, how do I get involved? Because mm -hmm. it's my neighbor and they're going to, I'll get retribution mm -hmm. or something like that. So They're yeah. actually legally not allowed to tell where the report came from. Oh, really? So when you call, mm -hmm. um, even if you do give your information, sometimes they'll ask you if you want to be a um, notified of what the results are, if it's founded or unfounded. Mm -hmm. um, and you can give them that information if you would like, um, but it is anonymous. They cannot legally tell who made the report. Okay, I'm gonna use a term and you'll know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. 
And I it's know called where you're going. Mandi- <laughs> well, maybe mandated reporters. Yes. Oh, so oh, we're yes. in sync here. <laughs> so, for instance, in education, I was a mandated mm-hmm. reporter. No question about it. I saw something. Mm-hmm. My 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 lifestyle, my my work, my certification, my everything. If I didn't report, I could be brought up on charges yes. and lose everything. Yes. So mandated reporter. Who is a mandated reporter? So a mandated reporter is anyone who works with children. So if you're a profession, you're working with children at any capacity, um, you are a mandated reporter. Um, and so that means if you if suspect that there is abuse of any of these forms or if a disclosure is made to you, you legally have to report that. Yeah. Um, it is your job. When when you're in working hours, right? If you are outside of work, then it's not a legal mandate, but we encourage you to still do so. Um, good Samaritan type yes, thing. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's when you're working. And I believe the only profession that is a mandated reporter 100%, 100% of the time is Child Protective Services. Okay. Okay. I know that there were times when I would get a call and the nurse would say, We need to talk, or the teacher reported something, mm-hmm. and it was like, everything stops Mm -hmm. and people don't realize this. So when you're in a school setting, a preschool setting, whatever, when you're working with kids, everything stops and you sit down with your team and you look at the situation Mm -hmm. and then you have to make the call. Mm -hmm. And so many times I would get, I would get like flamed back by the parent, the custodial or whatever, saying, why did you make this report? Mm -hmm. I had no choice. Absolutely. You know, and and it's sort of like, you should understand, we do this for everybody. It's just not your kid or this situation. We have to do these things. If we see a burn, a mark, a cut, or something that looks Mm -hmm. totally out of of the ordinary, or the child even reports something, even if it's a lie, even Mm -hmm. if the kid's ticked off at their parent and made Mm -hmm. some story up, you still got to kind of weigh that out, right? Yeah, and with that being said, I want to throw some statistics at you, but less than 8% of the time, um, disclosures of abuse are fabricated. Mm -hmm. So it's a very small percentage that um, children lie about abuse, particularly sexual abuse that mm-hmm. is happening to them um, and so so 92 percent of the time they're telling the truth correct wow. yes and so that's why it's it's you know better safe than sorry right because if a child is saying something that just really doesn't seem right just seems a little bit off or they just say something that's totally like how do you even know this or you know that's that gut feeling that something's going on I need to tell someone about it and with that when we're community members or when we're just a teacher or something like that, we don't want to investigate that child, even though it is human nature to figure out exactly right. what's going on to help that child. When we start to ask questions and probe, we can actually throw off an entire investigation. Absolutely. Just take down their information and call mm-hmm. their authorities. Absolutely. Let them do it because then it keeps you out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And also use that child's exact words. That's really important um, when it comes to the investigation process, especially if it's sexual abuse. Um, and if that child and if that family wants to move forward with a criminal or um, a legal mm-hmm. you know, process, those exact words are very important for the co- cooperation of that case. Right, because right. then they're going to interview the child and they want to make sure they're saying the same thing. Correct, right. And you're not not ha- having a, a vendetta against that family. Or right, parent, right, absolutely. Trying to set them up. Mm-hmm. All right, so we, we, we're talking about physical abuse, and mm-hmm. you mentioned sexual abuse, mm-hmm. and they kind of are in the same ballpark because we're talking mm-hmm. about physicalness. Mm-hmm. So people watching right now might be thinking, why in the world would you abuse a child? Why would you sexually abuse a child? And what we're saying to child is anyone that's under the age of what? 18. 18. Mm-hmm. So where does that stem from? I mean, why? Oh, I don't, that's a that's a loaded question well, there, give right? give it a best shot. You know, I, I mean, mean, we, we can't we spend all day on this, but I mean, people are thinking, why would you hurt a little child? Why mm-hmm. would you hurt anybody? Yeah, I mean, what sticks out to me the most is just like that trauma, right? If you have unresolved trauma, if you um, just have unhealthy relationships if you've never known a healthy relationship if you don't know about consent right um, and the legalities of it there's you know a lot of different things that kind of go into it and with the people who abuse children there's really no demographics of the perpetrator. So what do you mean by that demographic? I know what it means, but yeah. for, for our viewers. Yeah, I mean, we have seen at Child Advocacy Program um, offenders who are of all races, of all ac- socioeconomic statuses, of all genders, um, 
So this has nothing to do with poor people, rich people, uh, people from any country or neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's all levels. You yeah. know, and we see this on TV. I mm -hmm. mean, and some of the TV is based on reality and others are, are real news reports and you think, mm -hmm. I mean, we just saw some stuff, we were just talking about, and I won't go into it, but some famous star was just, mm -hmm. you know, busted for whatever, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, child pornography and trafficking and junk yeah. like that, and uh, horrible stuff. So, I mean, wow. Here in Chautauqua County, if you could give me the number one reason for child physical abuse, what would it be? I mean, I so... Mean, is it alcoholism? Is it mental, mental health issues? Uh, anger issues all of it all of it all of it you know and a lot of times those things overlap and intersect yeah. with one another yeah. and so really when we're talking about that the protective factor so how do we protect our kids from all of this horrible stuff that's happening right mm -hmm. and so parent resiliency right if you know just being able to bounce back in difficult situations like we said it's hard to be a parent it, it really is you have a kid there's no manual right it's you have a kid in the hospital all right go home yeah <laughs> and so being able to have that resiliency to bounce back from tough situations having that support whether that's community resources like cap like prevention works like coi or if it's just having your friends right your parent friends um um, and also that knowledge, right? That knowledge of child development and mm -hmm. um, setting boundaries, communicating, giving kids that education, all of that is what helps protect these children. So on the same hand, what causes children to be abused would be the opposite of these things, right? If you don't have the ability to bounce back from t tough situations, if you don't have that support, if you don't have those resources, it increases the likelihood that, you know, something like that might happen. Um, I wrote down two terms, and, I'll, and I'm going to cross each one of them off in a second. Mm -hmm. um, true or false? Uh, child abuse has long-term effects in adulthood. True, absolutely true. I've seen situations where I've known adults, a number of them, that were abused in a number of ways. It doesn't it doesn't matter what type, and and some are some bounce back and they and they put it behind them and others their lives are destroyed mm -hmm. they have terrible relationships in in their marriages or or the, it becomes cyclical and mm -hmm. what i mean by yeah. that is they were abused therefore they abuse mm -hmm. because whatever they're re acting out their anger on others and mm -hmm. so forth and um and so if that's the situation are there services for people that are in that cycle yeah Absolutely. So um, I know you already mentioned Prevention Works have a mm -hmm. parenting program right. as well. Yeah. Um, child advocacy program, we can work with parents as well. We have our family advocates. Um, they really work hard to provide that support to the parents. Um, and in these situations too, at child advocacy program, it's the non-offending parent. Um, and so that like we can work with them to give them the skills to raise a child with trauma because a child with trauma um, can act in different ways. They can have special needs compared to a child yeah. who uh, um, maybe doesn't have as much trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I know that the YWCA Jamestown, mm -hmm. they have a new grant um, that they're they're still in the planning process, but they're going to be rolling it out um, where they work with the offenders. Oh. Um, to, oh, we talked about this, yeah. Yeah, yeah to provide that. that support, that mm -hmm. education, to hopefully break that cycle um, and give them the skills to, you know, live a more okay. resilient lifestyle. Okay. Catch your breath. Folks, you're watching Chicago <laughs> Sunrise. I'm Doc Amos, and my guest today is Emily, Emily Spielman, who is with the Child Advocacy Program here in Chautauqua County, who has offices in both Jamestown and Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Child Abuse Awareness Month. And I know this is kind of a heavy subject, but it's mm -hmm. here. And it's everywhere. It's not yeah. just, you know, in our in our cities and in, in rural areas. It's, it's everywhere in mm -hmm. the world. Okay, so let's keep on going here. So we talked about long-term effects and that it, it, it does affect us in adulthood. And hopefully we can do something early on to to correct that and help mm -hmm. people so they live a more wholesome yeah. life, a more normal, mm -hmm. whatever that means, but less angry or less mm -hmm. depressed or whatever. But my question is this. All right, physical abuse, you see the, the, the conks on the head and you say, okay, they, they fell down. But then we see other things, some other physical injuries. All right, we it's it's kind of you can see it sometimes unless the kid you know picks up their shirt and whoa where'd that come from, but we can kind of sort those out a little bit. But mm -hmm. then there's the unseen. You talk about sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. So what are we looking for? Yes. Yeah, so How do you know? 
a lot of times it's really the behavior of the kid and a lot of times you'll just notice some changes in their behavior and you might not know that it's sexual abuse you mm -hmm. just might think that something's going on yeah. um, and so what I mean about those changes in behavior maybe you have a kid who's very extroverted and now they're very introverted or vice versa okay so extroverted mean they're really friendly outgoing mm -hmm. introverted mean all of a sudden they are sitting in the corner by themselves they're going to their room by themselves right. they don't have much or just say. not talking as yeah. much maybe not connecting with their friends as much um, and so an extrovert and maybe they you know they're a social butterfly they like hang out with their friends all the time they're texting this that um, and now they're not really talking to anyone they're just kind of quiet maybe sitting in the classroom not really engaging um, those kinds of things um, you uh, might see and, and this one we kind of have to be uh, careful of too because it's very common is a small child or a child knowing more than they should for their developmental age right mm. um, and so you know that used to be one of the major red flags now with the internet we have to be a little bit careful because is something being really being going on or did they just you know have a phone and weren't being supervised and learned something they should have. I can't have. believe that would happen. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> I look up something on the internet mm -hmm. and the next thing I know I've got all these these uh, pictures and sites from mm -hmm. all you know I don't want to say in particular country but there's countries people you know very vivid pictures mm -hmm. I go like oh my god what, what the kids could see this all mm -hmm. day. Absolutely. All right, so, so they're using terms and, and phrases and mm -hmm. uh, language perhaps mm -hmm that it's inappropriate mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily mean they're abused but, but on the other you, hand we have to remind ourselves that it's not our job to investigate that right because if something really is going on yeah. then we don't want to accidentally interrupt that investigation so that's where it's important to make that report um again it is anonymous and also you know what we see most of the time too with sexual abuse is that kids will make kind of like test the waters, right? They might give you just a little bit of information to see how you react, to observe like what is your response going to be. And then either they may eventually tell you more and more, um, or the other thing that we see is it's accidental, right? They accidentally say something, or they tell a friend because they trust a friend, and then that friend will come to an adult saying, I don't know what to do, my friend just told me this. You know, I, I, I think I heard a theme in what you were saying. And that's listening. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, listening. Um, oh, it's so so easy for adults to react so fast because mm -hmm. what what do we want to do? We want to make we it help. better. Yeah, we want to help, and so we run over the situation without listening. And the kids go, "Whoa, whoa that's, that's not what I meant." I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and and you're oh, you're messing it all up. But mm -hmm. just shut up, listen, <laughs> listen to them because they will over time trust you more and more and more to, yeah. to tell you things absolutely and you know um fortunately i was trained pretty well in my career mm -hmm. and my kids to this day will talk to me you know they're all have kids i mean we yeah. talk and not everybody can say that you know their kids open up to them because mm -hmm. Unfortunately, maybe we weren't always good listeners, yeah. and that's that's a skill. It's not easy. Yeah, it is. It is really hard, right, mm -hmm. to like pump the brakes on something, especially when you care and love about someone so mm -hmm. much, and you're just, you know, if someone tells you something along those lines, I mean, me myself, my mind would be racing, right, trying to yeah. think like, what about this? What about that? Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah, um, and so pumping the brakes on that just to really understand that. Um, they feel comfortable telling their story and they're looking for you to get that help. But your job in that situation is to connect them to the trained professionals who are mm -hmm. trained to give them help. And I think the other side of the coin is the there's the one person that wants to make it better and, and, and re overreacts. And then mm -hmm. you have the other side of the coin is, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. How dare you do that? You're embarrassing yeah. me. You know, and so now we've shut the kid down mm -hmm. because now they're feeling, oh, Right. I'm dirty. I'm, I, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I've done a bad thing. Mm -hmm. and it was out of their control. Yeah, you know they didn't yeah, create absolutely. the situation. It's the adults that do these things. Mm -hmm. And are. actually, the most important aspect of a child healing from sexual abuse is a supportive, non-offending caregiver. Mm -hmm. So if we have that parent who is listening to them, who says, you know, I'm here for you. I will give you the help that you need that is key in that child's ability to have resiliency in that situation and heal and cope with that traumatic situation. Yeah, even though I don't want to bring this up, you already opened the door on it, so I'm going to bring it up. How in the world do parents can control the internet? Oh man, we have I, a I whole... I mean, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed <laughs> oh, by man. it. 
<laughs> that's a whole two hour training that we have. <laughs> but, but, so you do have help? Yes, we do. So we do. How about just give us the advertisement? What do you do to help? Yeah, so our training is called Links to Safety. It's mm -hmm. in two parts. The first part is about having those conversations with our kids, yeah. right? Because preparing them for the online world the same way we would prepare, prepare them for the real world is important because Kids love the internet, everybody's on it. We, even as adults, we're on it. So having those conversations about how to be safe is key. And then additionally on that, the second half of the training goes into how to physically safeguard the devices. So that goes for each individual device that the child is using. That goes for our at-home Wi-Fi network. And then it also goes into the um, service provider network. And so if we are able to at least secure one of those, it gives some protection. But if we do all three layers of that, it really provides a well-rounded aspect of protecting our children from explicit or harmful content on the internet. I know of a situation, and I won't go into detail who it was or where it was or whatever, but uh, where um, a child was at somebody's house, mm -hmm. and this was years ago. This was long before people were even realizing what was going on, and uh, the child got on the internet, and the, and, and the, and the folks in the, in the house didn't even realize mm -hmm. it. It was late at night, and, yeah. and it, the child was visiting family members, and the child somehow got on some site and rang up, <laughs> I forgot, like, a bunch of money going mm -hmm. to, to porn sites. Mm. And because that child was visiting, the, the people that lived at the house didn't even know that they needed new controls. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, so it was like a, a rude mm -hmm. awakening that, you know, when pe people have people visiting yeah. children and stuff, you know, as adults, we got to think about those things because they're curious. Absolutely. You know, especially once we get the hormones going, it's uh -huh. like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so they're curious, they're looking, and, and the internet is more than happy to help them, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's really kind of a sad world that's out yeah. there right now. And um, so, I, yeah, I just, you know, over dinner recently, we were talking with an, another couple, and, and they said that their children actually could, you know, help me with this, they could lock down the kids' tablets at a certain time of day. Yeah, you can set that right on your Wi-Fi cool router. Is that? Yeah, you yeah. can set, you can actually on your Wi-Fi router set profiles for each children mm -hmm. um, that you have and set different settings. So like if you have like a 17-year-old and you have a 10-year-old, right? The 17 year old might have a later bedtime, right? Mm -hmm. So you can set the different settings of when the Wi Fi is shut down for each. Um, and so there's a lot of different things. Like I could talk all day about right. it. But so, so there are ways to control the internet. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Where they go. And same with television. Mm -hmm. I think you can do a parental control mm -hmm. on there. Absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's a whole oh, thing. Boy. But I also want to say that that does, like, consider it as sexual abuse, right? Mm -hmm. If sexual abuse does not always have to be touching. So it could be the pictures mm -hmm. of um, explicit pictures. It could be showing a child pornography. Mm -hmm. um, it could be voyeurism, right? All of those things are considered sexual abuse. It doesn't have to be a physical touch to the child in order for it to be abuse. Wow. And again, here in Chautauqua County, right? Yeah. 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 Last year we actually had 2,603 reports of child abuse. What? In Chautauqua County. 2,000 what? 603. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. How, do you get, how, how do you get up every day and go to work? You know, it's hard, but we have a great team of people. Talk about who, your team. I don't yeah. think people know about your team. Yeah, so we work together with many different professions within CAP. So we have our family advocates. I talked a little bit about them. They support the family, um, educate them, um, accompany them to court. We have our family or our trauma therapists who provide that trauma therapy um, to help the child heal. We have our forensic interviewers. So our forensic interviewers are very important because they provide a safe, child-friendly space when the child is ready to disclose their abuse. And so it's non-leading, um, non-leading, non-suggestive questions. So we're just asking general, open-ended questions to provide the child an opportunity to tell their story. And it's a third party um, like it, we're third party, so we don't have a stake in the investigation and either. These people or. are highly trained in their areas. Yes, okay. they have very high standards that they have to follow. There's a very structured process that when they're talking with the child, they have to go through different steps. Mm -hmm. They have to verify that the child can distinguish between a lie and the truth. So, for example, they'll say, "Oh, um, I really love your hot pink sweater you're wearing right now," and they'd be like, "I'm not wearing a hot pink sweater." So that would be, you know, the validation mm -hmm. things along those lines, mm -hmm. um, and also those interviews interviews are legally dis de legally defensible um, so they can um, 
you know, use the information that they stated in the interview in an investigation in the court processes. So this, the, pe people can get arrested, right? And go to jail. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the goal is putting, you know, getting justice for these children and yeah. these families. Yeah. Absolutely. And when we talk about that, you know, sometimes we don't get the results that we want, but justice can also be interpreted or challenged with resiliency, right? So if they don't get the results in court that they're looking for, how can we move past that? How can we provide that coping and that healing so that you can be resilient and you can move forward from that awful situation and live the life that you want to live? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if I remember right, because I, I did some work with, with your agency at one time, you have a deputy sheriff? that's connected to your group? So, okay, so yeah, so we actually work together with our multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. So the professions that I just said are within CAP, that's within our CAP organization. We also have our Safe Harbor yeah, anti-human trafficking program. Mm -hmm. um, but then, and then of course the prevention educator who I am, the training person, so we provide the trainings. Um, but we partner with other outside organizations. So we'll partner, we partner with all of the law enforcement agencies in Chautauqua County. Mm -hmm. We have medical providers who will provide um, anything from a routine um, physical, just to check up on the kid, to collecting evidence for court. Um, we have other community agencies, Child Protective Services, uh, Salvation Army and News Center, uh, you know, prevention works. So any nonprofit in the area we're okay. trying to partner with. Hey, catch your breath. We have a phone call. All right. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> uh, good morning, Jack. Good morning, Emily. I don't want to hold you up. Uh, it's great what you're doing. Uh, most informative. And uh, good luck on Monday watching the eclipse. <laughs> well, thank you. Same to you. <laughs> you got your glasses? Oh, yes. I have, Michael, I have two of them in case somebody needs them. There you go. Oh, All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks for calling in. Take okay. Care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey. Okay. We've talked about physical. We've talked about sexual. How about psychological? Yeah, so psychological really is kind of incorporated in all of these, right? Okay. And so it's, it's, the, um, it's just the impact on their mental health. Um, and so if it's the use of just like that verbal language, if you're constantly degrading that child, if you are calling them names, if you are saying you'll never be enough, right? Or See, it's, that's my Harry Potter boy. Yeah, you know? Harry Potter that's why is a perfect, I, That's why like, I brought example. him up. I mean, that poor kid, I don't know how he, yeah. how he grew up anywhere close to normal. And Harry Potter was treated differently than the other sibling, right? Yeah. And so like the difference in that, that's a perfect example of that as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, it has those those effects to their, their brain, their mental health, how they view themselves. Um, you know, depression, anxiety, any of those sort of things. So why would someone do that? Oh, God, I wish I knew. Well, give us a couple of examples. I mean, wh why? May they might not know anything else, right? They might not know any other way. They might be stressed. That's they might how they not were have, how like, they were brought up. Yeah, maybe they have a mental health disorder themselves. Maybe uh, they have anger issues. Maybe yeah. they don't really have those boundaries. Maybe they lack communication skills. Mm -hmm. um, any of those things um, could really contribute to someone having those abuse yeah. on that. You know, there's and so many it's, it's that invisible abuse that mm -hmm. people just don't see, the neighbors yeah. may not see. But I'm, you know, we all, we probably have all seen the child that mm -hmm. is just totally withdrawn, yeah. uh, just looks down, yeah. you know. And then when you realize they go home and, well, there's nothing there for them or mm -hmm. they're, they're just not considered mm -hmm. worthy of anything, you know. And you wonder, why? Yeah. You know, and there's just so many circumstances, economic mm -hmm. or whatever. And as you say, sometimes it's cyclical. That's how the parent was trained. You know, you, you know, boys are boys and girls are nothing, or mm -hmm. the opposite. Girls yeah. are everything and boys are nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? There's all that, all, just all kinds of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, do you report psychological abuse? You can absolutely, yeah. So what so. would you? So what would y'all do about that? So, so we, in those situations, we would probably hook them up with our mental health therapist. Mm -hmm. And um, we, so at CAP, all of our services are free. Um, okay. But because of that, we have a lot of people who are looking for our services. So we do have to make sure that it is specific for trauma therapy. Mm -hmm. And if it's a situation where we don't have the capacity for it, we always re, um, refer out, right? So we have other therapists, um, CCMH. Um, would be an example mm -hmm. or the Chautauqua Center or the Resource Center they all have therapists Everybody that working together. we could yep absolutely so we would refer out to them so that they're still connected with the services that they need I know this is we're down to our last minute 
Emily, thanks for coming in as always. But yeah. I'm going to give you the last minute or so. Just tell people what you want them to know. Yeah, well, I know this is a tough topic to talk about, and it's not fun, it's not enjoyable, but it is important that we educate ourselves so that we can keep our children safe. We do have some events coming up um, in Mayville, actually April 11th at 1 p.m. at um, the Family Court Building. We're going to have our pinwheel planting, where we will pin or plant the pinwheels to represent child abuse prevention um, to keep our kids safe. And we'll also have another event on in Dunkirk on April 7th. 17th at 1 p.m. at Dunkirk City Hall and so that's just a great way where we can um, you know just celebrate families and yeah. strength and that positivity um, to reduce child abuse and of course just keep learning right whether that's through one of these um, links um, prevent child abuse New York org it's a great um, a site to learn a little bit more about it or even the cdc.gov slash violence prevention. Okay, and again, folks that are watching or listening, 1-800-342-3720. Give them a call on the hotline there and report, report, report. Let's take care of our children. Okay, Emily, thanks for coming in. Yeah, Appreciate it. You. Keep up the work. I wish you didn't have that job. I wish <laughs> that whole department would go away I know. because you didn't have to do it. Yeah, the goal but is you to do, not have but a you're job. Here, and I'm <laughs> glad you're here. Folks, Doc Amos, we got a great month of other uh, shows coming up. We're going to be talking about pies and soups, and we got music and, and an author coming up this month. So, lots of good things. Please, if you know something that's going on in a child's life, please report. Please do something about it, whatever it takes, or tell somebody else, and they'll report it. Just do it. Uh, Clips is coming up. Be safe and think about all the things we've talked about on that. Take care and have a great weekend. It's supposed to get warmer. We'll see. Bye now. Take care.